Hi everyone, welcome back to the workshop. And today I'm jumping back into it with the x tool F1. And what I'm wanting to do is set up a jig of sorts to be able to engrave things like pencils and pens or other small kind of roundish objects. And so I'm gonna dive in, see if we can't design up a little bit of jig that works with the F1 and uh, see if we can make it in a couple different ways. Uh, we're gonna try it doing it with the laser, but also we're gonna dive into a little 3D printing today. So this is something you wanna learn more about, maybe try out for yourself, stay tuned. We're gonna jump right into it. All right, so we've got the Xtool F1 here and it has our small working area down here. And of course, we could just take our pens and kind of manually line them up. You can use kind of these screw holes on this grid to try to make them in alignment, but then you're still gonna to have to double check that each time and uh, make sure there's no user error. You can easily get it slightly uh, off to the side on uh, one side or the other. So my thought is they have this nice panel that pops out here. So this whole plate just comes out and there's just a lip in here. It recesses in that uh, I think we can place a jig into that area, which will then kind of lock it in place if we design it right. So as long as we set up our jig right and this locks into its square, then uh, all our stuff should be parallel with the laser and uh, it'll be in alignment. And we can then create a template with an XCS and or light burn to just drop our text or our graphics in there. So um, what I'm gonna need to do is gonna take some measurements off of this. And this is where uh, I strongly recommend you get yourself a pair of digital calipers. And uh, this will let you really get exact measurements of uh, thicknesses, widths and whatnot and allow you to be more precise. It'll also allow you even to just measure the thickness of your material so that uh, you can make adjustments in light burn for slots and tabs. So uh, a, a digital caliper is a very handy tool with these lasers. I'll have a link down to one of the ones on Amazon that I really like. And uh, if you're interested, you can buy that one and uh, appreciate the support. But um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna grab some measurements on here real quick. And we're gonna jump into the computer and see what we can draw up and uh, then from there, we'll see what we can do with cutting it out on a laser, as well as uh, maybe making one on a 3D printer. So let's dive into that. All right, so this is what I have come up with. Now I took the dimensions from the Xtool F1. And so this plate down here, about 3 16 of an inch. And then I went ahead and measured pencils to see what their width was. I didn't want them sinking down all the way in. So here we have about a quarter inch. They're a little bit wider than that with the octagonal shapes, as well as most pens will be able to sit down in there without sinking all the way. And then I gave it about 0.2 inches of depth here just to not make it too tall. Um, you could definitely, you know, this could be deeper, could be shallower, just kind of depends on the types of pens and pencils you're using, but this seemed to be kind of a happy medium there. And so we end up having slots for about seven pens or pencils here. Um, one of the things is I, I definitely needed one right in the middle so that we can use our focus point. So I just kind of started there, worked my way out. So we do end up with these gaps on the end. And um, I kind of just felt like we wanted enough separation so that in between the spaces, if we have like the pen clips, there would be some room for those as well but uh, wanted to be able to fit as many in there as possible. So I kind of felt like seven was a, a pretty happy medium. Uh, anyway, this will be great. It's uh, a solid object as for 3D printing, but then I also figured out in a way to just break this up. We can cut out the base plate, leave some etch markings in for guides as to where glue them in, and then we're gonna cut out these shapes. So I also have this file over here, which then can be output to Lightburn or XCS and you can cut this shape out. You would just score these inner lines, and this is why I don't have them connected. Um, this outside shape gets cut, and then these get cut, and then these are stacked up on these individual lines to basically create this same shape. So let's just kind of take a look at what that like in Lightburn over here. So I've brought this in to Lightburn uh, for cutting on our Xtool D1 Pro 20 watt. And so I've set up the lines here. You can see We've got them set up at 8,565 power. This is millimeters a minute. And then uh, for our line, we're cutting it at 225. Again, this is quarter inch material. It's gonna be quarter inch plywood. Possibly that kind of go a little bit faster, but I slow it down just enough to make sure we go all the way through. And then cutting out these eight spacers. So that's the job we will send to the laser. And then for the STL, we can definitely bring it into our slicer here. And you'll see that it's uh, it's got that shape. 
and, uh, and then we'll go ahead and slice this for this printer and uh, it's going to say this is going to take about an hour seven minutes with the printer that i have so we're doing this at a a fine that's kind of like the standard you could definitely you know up the layer height to quick uh, this doesn't need to be pretty it just needs to be functional but we'll go ahead at fine and uh, let that print out um, this is actually a printer that i'll be doing a review on but this was going to be one of the tests i worked on is just kind of making jig for the f1 seeing how well it fits in so i'm going to get this printed out i'm going to get the other parts the laser cut out we'll get the thing glued together we'll test fit it uh, and then we'll run it out to the laser and see how it works All right, so we have them both done. They both came out pretty well. Um, this is the one that we did on the laser. We cut this out on the X-Tool D120 watt. This is just roughly quarter inch material. It's probably closer to like 0.225-ish or something like that. They're rare to get actual quarter inch plywood. So this is uh, sized to fit in the base here. This does just pop in and there is, you know, maybe if there's half a mil of movement in there and it's, it's uh, you know, mostly side to side, not up and down. Uh, but that fits in there very well. Now, since this uh, base piece was actually, I think, about just a hair under two tenths of an inch, this does stick up from the bottom of it. That really has no bearing on the operation of this, um, but it does allow us to put our pencils in place here or our pens. Uh, your pens, depending on your clip, if it has it, they may be able to sit down like that or you're gonna be able to sit them to the side, which then may mean you can do fewer. I was able to rig this up to basically have slots for uh, about seven pens in here. And uh, so that'll let you batch batch them out. But like I say, if you have to lay them next to each other, those, those uh, clips may get in the way a bit. So uh, maybe the pens you'd have to cut down to about four. But the pencils being straight with no clip on there, you can definitely fit um, seven of them in there. But it does fit quite well. Like I say, this just sits up a little bit and then it just pops out. Our 3D printed one here, again, pretty much the same design and uh, it is pretty much the same dimensions. This also fits just right in there. Like I say, it's j uh, just a slight little, just enough that you can still pop it out, but it's almost a friction fit. But it locks them in there to uh, get them lined up. So we can place the jig in there. We can place our pencils or pens on top. And then we can jump into Lightburn or XCS, and uh, I'm gonna make sure I set up a template that will allow us to work with the objects in here. So let's jump into that, take a look at how it's gonna right, work. So we are in XCS, and what I've done is I've brought in this grid of basically quarter inch spacers, which matches up with our jig into where the pencils or pens would sit. And I've also centered it so that this middle bar should be in the middle of the work area. So as long as we put our text or graphics in here, we should be fine. Now, depending on the size of your pencils, um, you're going to want to kind of center this and maybe bring it down because if we use the whole box on this, it may not cover that. So in fact, you may only want to use half of this, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to bring in some text into one of these. And I've also put this, this is on layer two and I have that set to ignore. So this is really just an outline that can be used as a guide. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring in some text here and oh, that's not what I meant to do. I'll move it. So we're going to bring it up here. And then as you see, when we look at our pencils here, if I go ahead and frame and I've got this set up to outline, so I've come over here and I'll be looking at the outline. So that's going to bring it on. And you might not be able to see it, but it's actually curling over the edge of that pencil there. So what we're going to want to do is actually scale this down. 
probably about half the size. So let's go ahead and just turn it over. Out like that, maybe. We're going to recenter it here and redo our framing. And that's pretty close, but I'm going to bring it down just a touch more. I should bring in a new layer. So there you go. Sorry's workshop. Take this down to eight. I want this to engrave. And typeface. Try something a little more fancy. That there. Go ahead and delete that one. Try that as framing. Yeah, that looks pretty good. The P, the, the bottom of the P may be coming out, but as you can see here now, we can go ahead and hit stop. What we can do is just multiply this. We could actually try to create an array, but you can also just do a quick copy and paste, and then just manually align it like that. And just use your guides to get everything in line. There you go. And now if we frame, we're going to see it looks like it's hitting every pencil right. Now we can just set up our speed rate and our power and we'll be good to go. All right, so both tests work out pretty well, both the 3D printed plastic jig as well as the laser cut wooden jig. And uh, the settings I ended up using, so on the pencils, as hopefully you can see there, that came out with a, a decent marking without getting too deep. Uh, that was using the blue light laser. This was at about power of 80, speed of 200 millimeters a second, a single pass and 100 lines per centimeter. That was done within XCS. And now these pens, these were some bulk pens I got off of Amazon and they've got this kind of blue rubberized coating. I'm not sure what is underneath here because it's not coming through as like a real polished um, metal or anything, but it does kind of come out a bit white. I'm gonna see if I can clean that up a little bit. Um, but anyway, these came through, we were using the IR laser. Uh, I wanted to make sure that that focus was right on there because that IR laser only has about a millimeter depth of being in focus. The power was, uh, we had it set at 100 power, 100 millimeters a second speed, 200 lines per centimeter and two passes, and then just a quick wipe down, then got through that way. And if I can get it to focus on there, you'll see kind of how that ends up looking. And so that's some ballpark of what worked with the X-Tool F1 on these, using these jigs. So anyway, these blue pens, like I said, I got them on Amazon uh, in a bulk pack of, I think about 50. Uh, I'll leave a link down below if you're curious about these, want to play around with them. They all have different colors as well. And then the pencils are just your typical Papermate bulk pencils. Again, I think I got those off Amazon or you can get them at, you know, most any store these days. Um, but you're going to want to do a little bit of testing on your own. Make sure that the materials you have are uh, engraving well. But once you have those settings, you can just change the text, drop it in and uh, burn them away. And you'll have real quick uh, items that people can... Uh, pick up from your booth while you're at a fair or you could do this at home in your workshop 
uh, batching out orders real easy for them and such. So, so again, I have two different files of these. One is going to be the STL. This is for the 3D printed version of this. And then the other one will be a DXS FC SVG type file. And that is for the laser cut version. Uh, again, I use quarter inch on this, although you could cut this out of eighth inch material or three millimeter material and just stack it up. Um, but this makes it easier without having to align two pieces. So I'll leave links down below to these files for now and uh, just give them away. They didn't take too long to set up. And then I'll also include the XCS and the light burn template that you should be able to use to align these. So you'll, of course, want to do some tests, make sure that it is lining up with that. Uh, but once you save those templates with those tool layers or that layer that's set to ignore an XCS, you should be able to go ahead and uh, just drop your text in there and be able to burn away on your items. Once again, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for checking out this video. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave those down below. And if I earned your subscription, I'd always appreciate that. Maybe consider hitting the like button and uh, comments and questions down below in the section. Always go to help with interaction. And I love hearing how you are using these things or if you have questions using them, put them down there and I'll try to get back to you as well. Otherwise, I'm going to wrap this up and leave it here. Thanks again for hanging out, and I hope you can get out into your workshop and make something too. We'll catch you next time.